This episode of Nutshell Brainery is brought to you by The Courage to Succeed. Discover and achieve what matters most, and tell everything else to take a hike by Lon Schiffbauer. Now available at Amazon. Imagine that you're enjoying the day shopping at the mall. Then from out of nowhere, I come up to you and start talking to you about the power of communication. I then go into a passionate discourse about how the power of communication is the driving force behind all human endeavor. How would you react? Well, I can't say for sure. My guess is that I'd find out pretty quick whether or not you carry pepper spray. But why? When I talk about the power of communication in the classroom, my students are engaged. They're taking notes. They're asking questions. They're... we talked about using demographics and psychographics to better understand our audience. But in addition to these, we also need to understand context, the circumstances surrounding our communication and our audience. There are many forms of context. For example, back in episode one, we talked about the noise in the environment that separate the sender of the message and the receiver of the message. This noise could include things like the time of day, temperature in the room, whether or not we were comfortable, if there was some guy in there distracting us, things that would prevent us from giving the communication our full and undivided attention. These are all examples of temporal context, things that affect us physically in relation to time and space. I remember once when a co-worker scheduled a department meeting at 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon just before a three-day weekend. As you might have guessed, it wasn't the most effective meeting ever. While we were all physically present, mentally and emotionally, we were miles away. Eventually, we agreed that the topic was not so urgent that we had to cover it at that moment, and so we rescheduled the meeting. Now, in this situation, we were the right audience, and the purpose was clear. The information he was delivering was important to us. However, this wasn't enough to overcome the context. I mean, Friday, 4 o'clock, 3-day weekend... Really? Context can also be where we actually are, our physical context. For example, if we're at a sporting event, we can yell and holler and scream all we like. We might do the wave and high-five one another to show our excitement when our team scores. But what if we're in a library conducting research for a paper? None of this behavior would be appropriate. I mean, yeah, you can get pretty excited, but, you know, cheering and chest-bumping the librarian just wouldn't fly. Although when you find the perfect article, oh yeah. So you can see how a behavior that's fine in one environment may be completely inappropriate in another. That's physical context. Another way that context influences us is through societal roles. This is called social context. For instance, let's say that one of my students is a police officer. Now in the context of the classroom, I'm the professor, so I pretty much set up the rules of engagement between me and the students. The fact that this one particular student is a police officer is irrelevant. In the context of the classroom, I'm in charge. However, let's say an hour later I'm speeding down the freeway at 100 miles an hour and this same student pulls me over. In this new context, this student is no longer a student. They're a police officer. And I'm no longer a college professor. I'm a civilian about to get a ticket. Finally, there's cultural context. A behavior that may be just fine in one culture can be completely inappropriate in another. For example, in Japan, slurping your noodles is a way of showing that you're really enjoying that steaming bowl of ramen. Whereas in the U.S., slurping and chomping your food is generally considered rude. This is where the phenomenon of culture shock comes into play. There's nothing inherently wrong or evil about slurping or not slurping your food, except for what culture says. Because we come from one culture where something is considered rude, when we travel or are exposed to another behavior, we're jarred a little bit. This is the power of cultural context. So you can see, figuring out how best to influence our audience is no easy proposition. 
We need to figure out demographics, psychographics, our stakeholders, temporal context, physical context, social context, cultural context. There's a lot of moving parts. But if we're going to effectively affect our environment and influence our audience, these are the things we need to understand and take into account. And so there we are. That concludes our look at understanding our audience. Next time, we'll talk about selecting the right channels when communicating. I hope you'll join me. This episode of Nutshell Brainery was written and produced by Lon Schiffbauer. Our theme music was composed by Scott Holmes. You can learn more about Scott's music by visiting freemusicarchive.org forward slash music forward slash Scott underscore Holmes forward slash.